People um, refer to me as the um, animal CSI. It's veterinary forensic medicine. So what it is is, is taking and applying forensic science to cases involving animals. My focus is definitely just on what can we do as far as veterinarians to be a part of the solving of these cases of animal cruelty and how can we make a difference. My role with the Michael Vick case was to assist the USDA and the U.S. Attorney's Office on a search warrant to excavate the two mass graves that were on the property. So that's what I did is I excavated two mass graves and then analyzed the 10 bodies that were removed. And we knew this case was going to be big, but we didn't know it was never going to leave the media. It still hasn't left the media. The way that those animals were killed was what made everybody upset that they were discarded and treated so cruelly. It would shock the world because they didn't realize that all this really does happen related to dog fighting. If dogs don't perform well in test fights or in actual fights, they will be um, uh, killed. Animal cruelty is definitely offensive to most human beings and that we should respect these animals. And what we're seeing change is how law enforcement and prosecutors and legislators are viewing these crimes in that they don't occur in a vacuum. They are sentinel acts, meaning that they, people who commit animal cruelty are at risk of committing other types of crimes if they haven't already. There used to be what was called the serial killer triad, uh, which was a history of arson, fire setting, um, prolonged bedwetting, and animal cruelty. And other research has shown that all three may not always be in the history of a serial killer, but animal cruelty always is. Uh, so that's really interesting. We had different laws across the United States, misdemeanor laws. They were really low-level crimes. And what we've seen happen is them increase those laws so that they're felonies. And getting the punishment or intervention, whatever is appropriate for each crime. So that really, I, I will say since 2007, um, it does seem that the Michael Vick case was a big motivator for law enforcement and legislators to change the laws. After that, we saw in the next year, pretty much every state have a felony dogfighting law and um, special sessions were called and there was no longer the pushback that we would get from legislators. What happened is politicians saw that the public outcry on that case and they realized this is their voting constituents, that no one likes animal cruelty. I look at animals as mysterious and constantly communicating. Animal behavior is, is just amazing to me, especially different species together communicating. And um, when I look at animals, I'm honored that they ever trust me or human beings, because they shouldn't. When you trace back their roots, they were not domesticated. So I find that they are the most fascinating things to be around. <coughs> I have two dogs and five cats, and they are my children. They are definitely my children. It's very interesting in the work that I do. When I come home and I have any smells, uh, certain smells on me, my golden retriever reacts and is, um, gets depressed. So I have to watch that with him. You got the bone? Good girl. <laughs> in 20 years, I hope to see that we have in every jurisdiction that they have functioning animal crimes unit from law enforcement all the way to veterinary support to the crime lab to prosecution. So that there's what I think we're going to see is special courts. Like we saw with uh, years ago, we didn't have family court and we didn't have uh, a child court. So we've so seen that trend and I think that's what we'll see in 20 years is that we'll have special animal prosecutors, special animal judges because they have to know about these cases. They have to know they're very complicated and there's a lot of nuances. So I think that's what we're gonna see. I definitely try to change the world. That's what my dad said since I was little, <laughs> that my uh, goals might be too lofty. Uh, yeah. Y yes, wasn't planning on being a pioneer. Uh, don't know how I got here for sure, except um, I knew that we needed um, someone to step up and start doing this and I looked for someone to learn from when I first started doing this and found there was no one except from the human side. And so that's how I got here, I guess.